The whole of life used to play it in, in the middle of the barrage, you know. We had stalls inside and out, mostly outside. My dad had a fishing stall. He was in just facing Kent Street. I brought my daughter down. I says to see where a part of her history is. I says you'd be sitting out there. I says you'd be, you'd start off working in the barrage on a Saturday morning, and you'd finish on a Sunday, and you were freezing. I says and you wouldn't heat up to the next Friday, and then to go back and do it all again. I was there for I was about five, so we were always helping out. And then I got to about seven, and of course I had to go and get a job. You know, I mean I kind of just be hanging about, you know. So, um, so I managed to get a job, and I was. <laughs> So I was seven year old and um, it was, I had this guy, these two brothers asked me to work their stall, but one was, one had, um, one sold tellies and one sold, sold shirts. And I, you know, as a child, when you're me, you don't ask these things. So I was like, one week the shirts would be on and they'd be selling the shirts, that was fine. Next week the guy would come down with the tellies, put the tellies on, sell tellies, no bother. Next week the shirts would come on, a guy would come down, Where's that guy that sold me that effing telly? It's no one. <laughs> and, and no being wanting to lie, because when you're, you're a wee kid, I would say, he's not here. But, um, so I wasn't lying, he wasn't here. So the next week he'd come down, and he, before he put his tellies out, he used to always say to us, did, did anybody come down last week? And I'd say, aye, there was a guy down uh, complaining about a telly, but I saw right, I'll not be doing this week, so he'd put his tellies back in. <laughs> You know, my dad had stalls down here, so we were here every weekend, every single weekend. Every Christmas Eve, we was, I'm speaking about that as well, this was a place to be because, of course, the shops would shut, everybody would go home, they would all get their dinner, get dressed up and go, right, we're heading down the bar, is that was a place to be on Christmas Eve. So you'd have everything all stocked up, the place was absolutely heaving, you'd be selling stuff, you know, hand over fist, you know, people... First, you, you know, people would be a bit reluctant to buy something, but then they would start getting look at the time. You know, we need to get some presents in, so they'd start buying all stuff. By the time five to twelve came, you could have sold them anything. This season there was a guy past us, and we had a load of three legs. These dolls that they had the, the legs had actually broken. You know how like the legs used to be held by a wee elastic, and it snapped inside, and of course the leg kept falling off. And the guy's like, just put it in a box, just put it in a box, I'll get it fixed somehow. He says, I can't get him without a present for the win. <laughs> so it's just like... Well, I was done since I was five. I was helping out in the stalls. I would be asked to watch a stall, which is another story. I don't know if anybody knew this, but whenever you claimed benefits, your benefits only went from Monday to Saturday, because they assumed that everybody didn't work a Sunday, because Sunday was the Sabbath. So, what happened, what happened was, we used to have a saying, and it used to be, as rare as a stall holder, you know, an adult stall holder, when a camera appears in the bar is. Right, so, on the Saturday, you'd be standing there, so you'd, you'd feel somebody, you know, collar you, like, stand there a minute, there's a camera coming. If MD asks, this is your stall. And then, so, <laughs> so it was all these wee kids all, like, standing, going, so who's the stall? Who's, you know, is it your, your pet? No, it's mine. You know, it's my stall. By the Sunday, it would come, a camera could come down and they would just stick two fingers up at it because they're like, I can't do nothing. You know, they don't pay me for a Sunday. <laughs> they changed the loophole. So I think, you know, I think that was filled in quite quickly once they discovered, they discovered that. But I started working at 10 um, on different stalls and it was car seat covers and cushion covers. So I was standing, I was telling them this, standing there doing my pitch to this woman and there was a load of kids that, one of the boys was a kind of ringleader, but I found out later his dad had a lot of cafes and stalls that he had, and that his dad owned. And he always used to turn up, he was always dressed like his dad, right? His dad used to dress like, um, was it, rocker, you know, kind of rocker. So, and a teddy boy, that was it. And he, the boy always had the same clothes. Must have been expensive, but anyway. But they used to climb under the stalls, and they used to put their hands up and try and see if they could steal something. And if there was money lying, they would maybe even pick that. Just out of devilment, because he didn't need it. He'd probably just doing it for devilment. So I've spotted them at this side of the stalls. And they would run under. Just like, you know, just like your rats. They would just run under. And then they would try and grab stuff. And I'm talking to this woman, and I've, I've spotted them at the side of my eye. But we always used to keep a big stick at the side of the stall. And so, 
So while I'm selling this thing to the, this woman, and she's talking away, and I'm, I've not even stopped talking to her, when I picked the stick up and went whack on the stall, hit his hand, and you could hear a yell, you know, and it was just like, oh! And then, without even breaking the thing, me, I just looked at the woman's face, the woman was in shock, and I seen the boy come in at the other end, and I'm, as I'm bagging it and taking her money, I look at her, and he's looking up, and he's like, ass, and I went, right? Do you know what I mean? It's <laughs> like, you shit, yeah. Trying to me. You'd be sitting in the stall and you would see families falling out, you'd see couples making up, you'd see, you know, says, you've seen the whole of life in the street, you know, and all sorts of things played out. So you're, you're just, I says, life actually happened on the streets, just watching everything play out. You're like, and you'd see people going away and you're like, I didn't know what, did they get to find out what happened? What happened? Did you just get back together? Did they fall out? You know? <laughs> Are they still married? Did she move to London? I don't know. <laughs> we had two men that had started helping out my dad because obviously I'd moved on and I was helping out in other stalls. So he'd got two elderly men. One used to come down really, really well dressed and the other one was kind of shabby dressed, you know, but um, the wee one that was kind of shabby dressed, we had a wee sideline, he always had a wee sideline, so he'd, 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 he'd dig up worms and, you know, he would sell these worms and stuff for things. And uh, maggots. Now, nobody asked him how he ever got maggots, right? And what happened was my dad got a shop. And so he'd got this shop and he thought, I'll see how the shop goes with the, the fishing gear as well. And took Sam with him. The two guys were called Sam. But he took Sam with him. And um, so he says, aye, so he was still doing his wee sideline. So the shop didn't take off, right? So a month or two later, my dad says, no, it's not going to work out, you know, just think that. So we're clearing out the shop and we find a bucket. <laughs> right? right? Keeping in mind, my dad's par partner had a butcher, right? He's the butchers in Parkhead. And we find this bucket and we're like, what's in the bucket? Took the ro ripped the bucket, the lid off the bucket, and all these blue bottles came out. This is what the guy was doing. He was getting a sheep's head for the butchers, putting it and taking the maggots off it for the fishing. Aye. Good old days. <laughs> oh, you were never bored. I mean, you were freezing, you were cold, you know, you hated it sometimes, but there, there was always something happening, you know, or there was always something about to happen. So you were never, never really bored and you would, nothing ever surprised you, you know, some happens, you're like, of course that's going to happen, you know, if a celebrity's turning up, you know, and getting a photo opportunity to, you know, the guys coming down and claiming they're the IRA and they're going to take everything off your stall and um, you're going to hand it over and they're not going to pay any money, <laughs> and you're like, you think so? Try it, pal. You know what I mean? Because you just needed to shout a word in the barras and that would be it. You would have, you know, there would be people running about you to protect, you know, protect you. We never went that, we've seen that. I says, the guy that's on the poster, the guy over in the big poster, we knew him, we worked beside him. Um, he was next to us, he used to sell the towels and stuff. I like used to sell all sorts of stuff, tea sets and everything. Got a few stories about that. But anyway, used to throw the towels out. But see, when you were standing there, you're not doing anything. Stand in the crowd, catch the towels when I throw them out and bring them back to the stall and hide them under your stall to, <laughs> until the crowds go away. He used to do that and then they used to go down to Salford and they used to bring up the big furniture van, full of all the stuff, and that would be the stock. So one of the times they brought up these tea sets, and I don't know if anybody remembers them, but they were clear tea sets and they were always claimed to be unbreakable. Of course they weren't, you know, shatterproof, they were supposed to be shatterproof. So he, of course he set up this big, the big van, cause, and then he put a load of tea chests out with a false floor on them so that he could bounce the cups on it and stuff like that to make it look like, look at this, if your veins drop them in, that gets, it's fine. And he'd be hitting them off the side of the van and he'd be going, look at this, they're unbreakable, they're amazing. These are, these are great stingmies. And then he'd say, going up, the, going up the tune and see how much they are. And I tell you, missus, you'll be back doing a taxi to buy a, a few of these, you know what I mean? So it was all this patter going on. So he's done all this, he's managed to gather a big crowd and he's telling them all, you know, come and get these tea sets, look at this. And he's like, ah, boom, stuck. There's a cup bouncing, look at that. Didn't he break? Off the side of the van. Look, ah, your veins can't break these. So he's training up somebody and he says to the wee guy, right, it's your turn, you're up. Get the crowd in, get them all warmed up, you know. You've seen what I've done, that's all you need to do. So that wee guy goes up, aye, he's doing his pitch, selling the, the aye, and watch your cups. <laughs> says, your cup, 
bang, hits it right off the side thing, the side on, instead of, you know, instead, no, instead of side on that way, it hits it that way, the thing shatters, it flings the cup, it hits the concrete, smashes, and the whole crowd disappears. And the guy saw there and went, and that's a few f***ing lessons you're needing, is <laughs> it? I can sell and stuff. He's like, <laughs> it just cleared the whole place. But some of the stuff that you used to, as I said, that was some of the training, the curtains that didn't fit. Oh, and I've got the last one. I'll tell you the last one. There was, my dad, as I said, used to go in wholesalers, buy all his, his fishing gear and stuff. And he went in and he asked the guy who was Angus, Angus, what's that? He says, that teacher, he says, that looks like waders. He went, aye, it's waders. He says, aye, but they're, he says, they're left, they're all left feet. And he went, all right. He says, just give me them anyway. And uh, the guy's like, you'll be back with it. He went, no. He says, well, get rid of it. He says, somebody will take them. So he puts them out in the tea chest. And he's like that. And it was like 50 pence. You know, something like that. I can't even remember what it was. 50 pence. Get your waders. Just pick your way through them. Pick them out. There were two left feet. There were two left feet in all different sizes. So people were, were taking them. Right. But then when they took them up the road, they didn't bring them back because they were left feet. Because they knew they were like, I can't afford a, a, a good pair of waders, so just take the ones with left feet. They brought them back because they were leaking. And they said, these are leaking. And do you know what they done? Fully and weak puncture repair kits were on sale. <laughs> so for your waders. Because <laughs> it was still cheaper than buying a good pair of waders. <laughs>